Hi, welcome to another video. So, many of you may know about the Arc browser. It is a really good browser that got a lot of hype because of how good it looked. It redefined what a web browser could be in a ton of ways, and the updates were rolling out regularly for it. It was free and almost everything that you'd want from a new-gen browser. But then, the developers behind that browser, which was the browser company, announced that they would not be working on that browser as much and would just be working on the maintenance for it without any new feature additions. This caused a lot of controversy on the internet. The controversy was due to what they announced that they were working on, which was an AI browser. Yes, they were basically saying that they were working on a new web browser that is natively integrated with AI features for the new generation, which made a lot of people skeptical of what direction they were going in and whatnot. Anyway, that's the background of how they launched the Dia browser and what it is. This Dia browser is an AI native browser that integrates AI features into the browser. It is currently under a waitlist, but I got access, and I thought I'd tell you guys about it and what my thoughts are about this browser. So, this is Dia, and what I was using until now in this video was also Dia. It is currently free as it is in alpha stages, but you'd obviously need to get through the waitlist in order to get access. Anyway, it is actually quite simple to understand if you regularly use AI applications like Cursor, Klein, or stuff like that. Now let me show you that how it all works. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Dart. Dart is the only truly AI native project management tool that you'll ever need. You can use it to manage your tasks for a project, create multiple boards, organize them, and do everything that you generally do. But you can also use AI with it to manage your tasks. For example, you can ask it to generate tasks for you by brainstorming or planning projects, as well as performing duplicate detection to keep you focused. You can even assign whole tasks to Dart and it can get them done for you. You can use their composer-like AI agent that has the context of all your tasks and you can chat in natural language to just ask it to do something. It can delete tasks, create tasks, edit tasks and handle multiple things like that. Apart from this, you can integrate it into your AI clients or coders with its MCP server, which allows your MCP client or coder to reference tasks from your dartboards. You can even integrate it into Claude, ChatGPT, and much more. Most of the features in Dart are free, while you can also get the $8 subscription for more features. Make sure that you check Dart out through the link in the description. Now, back to the video. When you are creating a new tab, this is what the interface looks like. You can either type in the URL of where you want to go and make it behave like simple browsers, or you can chat and ask questions with it. So, let's say that I want to know about me. What I can do is ask it to tell me about myself, and then it will just go ahead and do some searches and stuff and tell me about the topic, which in this case is me, and it is correct. It can choose to use web search or not use web search, which is finicky at times because it sometimes just uses the model's context instead of search. Anyway, if it searches, you can see the sources that it can reference and everything like that. It uses the GPT 4.1 models as the default for all things, which is good for these tasks. Though, I would have liked Gemini 2.5 Flash in this case, because that is the best model for these tasks, and the visual understanding of those models is quite cool as well. But this is also fine, and has a million context window, which is good for the tasks. Anyway, but this was like a super simple task. It can be done with ChatGPT as well. So, what is it that it brings new to the table? So, Let's say that I'm looking at this DeepSeek R1 weights. Now, what I can do is hit this chat option, or the shortcut is Command plus E, and this will open up this chat panel for us. Now, this is where you can chat with the context of this web page. You can see that the context is attached in the prompt over here, which is automatic, and you can also attach a screen capture of this page 
with this option and select any element on the page and add the visual reference to that as well. Now, let's say that I want to know what the required server specifications are needed to run this model. Once we send it, what you'll see is that it will go ahead and just start making the response for us here, which is great. It actually not just references this page, but also searches other sources related to this page in order to find the best results, which is quite awesome. The response here is quite good, and now you can say that you can do this with ChatGPT. You can paste in the link of this page and ask it something like this, but you would have to consider that it is tedious to do. This is one keystroke away, while that would require you to manage threads and everything, which this is much more native and stuff, which is good. But now, let's say that we have another tab here, which is going to be for the, um, DeepSeek R10528 model, which is a refreshed version of the older one that we have opened over there. Now, I want to know what the difference is between this model and the other model that we have opened there. So, I can just open another chat window here with Command plus E, and now it already has the context of this tab. But I can also hit the at symbol, and I can reference the other tab we had opened, which was the older DeepSeek. Or I can also add all tabs, if that's needed. Let's just add the other one. Now, I can ask it to tell me what the difference is between these two models. Now, it will just go ahead and not only take the reference of these models, but can also go ahead and search the internet for more context in this case. Then, in a bit, it will give me the response, which seems to be fully correct and detailed as well. This is quite handy. I mean, if you start using it, going back from this becomes kind of hard, considering that you're not an AI doomer. You can also select a chunk of data from the page, and it can reference that in the chat for you, and you can then talk just about that chunk, which is also cool. You can also detach this sidebar from the browser itself if you want more space. Another thing that it can do is, if you have a note-taking app like Notion Open, which we can just open over here, and then you can just open up the chat window again, and then ask it to do something like, Let's just ask it to write me a detailed comparison about the difference between the two DeepSeek models, and let's also reference them here. Now, it will go ahead and do the searches, and once it finishes, what you'll see is that it will give you an option to insert, which allows you to just insert the response in the note that we have opened, which is also good for a much more native AI integration experience. You can also go ahead and attach custom documents and stuff as well. It isn't agentic, meaning that it can't yet go ahead and take over and do stuff for you, which is something that Comet from Perplexity, which is also under a waitlist, seems to have from what I have seen on their demo videos and stuff. I do think that an AI native browser should have that feature, because that's what the ultimate goal should be for these browsers that they can like take over and do some repetitive tasks for you and do stuff. It shouldn't be hard with the models we have these days. Anyway, I digress. Another thing that it has is the personalization feature. So, if you're asking it to write an email or a script like I sometimes do, then this feature can come in clutch. It allows you to basically customize the behavior and tone of the AI with these features. You can enter what you like about you, how you want it to write, and if you're a coder like me, then you can ask it to write the code you're most comfortable in so that it doesn't output the code in Java and ruin your day. So, this is kind of handy as well. That is the core feature that it has that makes it different from the browser we daily drive. Though, these 90% of features have already been added to Chrome, and it even lets you like share screen 
and talk in natural language, which it doesn't have. Though, you can like reference multiple pages and stuff like that. But the UI and animations of this are really crisp. I would argue that it's better than ARC, and actually not as heavy as ARC is, and is really snappy. It feels like you are using something that is thought about, rather than something which is like added later to the product. I actually like these AI features a lot, because most of us, at least I really have to go through a ton of repos, articles, and much more to gather info, and it feels like a stretch to copy some context from something, and then copy something else from something, and then prompt chat GPT to draft more detailed info, whereas this feels like a godsend in those cases. It would be cool to see if they integrate an agentic mode into this. The AI browser scene is going to become tight, as Perplexity is also going to come out with their own version, and some more startups are working on similar things, and even Google is working on Gemini features for Chrome. I really liked this product as a whole. It is snappy, the features that it has are really useful, and the stuff actually works, and feels native rather than being stapled on top. The UI is top class. I'll be using it a ton. Let me know if you guys will or not. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.